Tuition is pretty pricey these days, and that's not even including all the material that you're going to need to purchase for architecture school. On top of that, it's really hard to know what you need anyways. After being in architecture school for six years, I picked up a lot of little hacks and tricks and tips as ways to save money while also getting all the materials that I still really needed. Drafting supplies, sketching supplies, modeling supplies, and then having a good laptop are a whole bunch of materials that you're really gonna need. And they're gonna help you really kind of breeze through your studio assignments. A lot of people though, when it's time to graduate, they have a lot of supplies that they're probably never gonna use again. So let's talk about everything you need for architecture school to save you time and money so you don't purchase things that you don't need. I also put the shopping list for this entire video in the description below. So if you want to find the best deals possible, go check out those links. And if we're just meeting, my name's Christopher. Welcome to All Art, where we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. All right, let's jump right in. First on our list is sketching pens. They're great because they produce a very clean line as opposed to sketching pencils where their line weights always vary slightly. Second on the list is drafting pencils. I would recommend picking up a set of drafting pencils that or a case of them that come in varying line weights. That way you don't have to worry too much about how much pressure you're putting on the paper. You can really just rely on the pencil itself. I pick up one that comes in a case like this one here. It's great because I like to keep everything really organized in, in its place. Next on the list is rulers. You're gonna wanna pick up a six inch, a one foot and an 18 inch ruler, usually a metal ruler with a cork back. This way it slides easily on your drawings without smearing them too much. Also the cork helps so that it doesn't slide around a lot. The six inch and the one foot ruler is perfect when you're like drawing and you're working on small scale images, but the 18 inch ruler comes in handy when you're trying to cut paper down to size. The eraser and the eraser shield are two things that you're really gonna wanna pick up. The eraser is what you're gonna want because you're probably gonna make a lot of lines or mistakes that you're gonna wanna erase. I really like the eraser shield because you can clean up your lines with it very easily. On top of that, the eraser shield can also help you make dotted lines very precise. Next is the architecture scale. The funny thing about this is a lot of people in architecture school don't even know how to use it but you're gonna want it to be able to draw and to interpret a lot of scale drawings that you're gonna run across. Colored pencils are a must if you wanna bring more life into your drawings. I would recommend personally the Prisma color pencils. Color pencils help to highlight certain architectural elements or different areas of your project that you wanna bring to life. What I really like about the color pencils is that you can get a true black and a true white to really elevate your drawings. You're probably gonna need a triangle or a set of triangles with different sizes. They're gonna help you draw angles and they're gonna help you draw perpendicular lines to the side of your cutting board or the sheet of paper that you're drawing on. They're really useful for the axonometric and the isometric drawings, which rely heavily on the 30 degree and 45 degree angles. Engineering blocks are an item that I really didn't pick up while I was in architecture school, but I always did realize that the best model makers always had a set of them. The engineering blocks are great because they're metal and they're perfectly square. They can help you align different parts of your model. And on top of that, they can weigh different parts down too so that they can glue better to each other. Everybody has their own opinion on what type of glue you should buy for model building or architecture school in general. My personal opinion is tacky glue or wood glue that is very quick drying. In my experience, super glue is perfect if you wanna make a quick model, but over time, it tends to become very brittle and your model will just fall apart in like three months. So like I said, you're just gonna want a tacky glue that is very quick drying and just try to be a little patient while you're waiting for it to set. In architecture school, you're gonna want a very good laptop for you to do your design work on. I think a good dependable laptop is really important for architecture school, considering you're gonna be on it about 90% of the time you're there. Up here is a link to a video I just made about the best laptops for architecture school. It'll help you find what you need and it's broken down into, I believe, four different budget categories. Pick up a good sketchbook that you can learn how to sketch in. My favorite sketchbook company is Muji and I like them because they're usually very portable, lightweight, and they're a very budget-friendly brand. I've seen firsthand that people who are great sketchers usually have very strong design sensibility. Not only that, but they tend to be really in control of proportions and to understand them well in architecture. And most importantly, sketching is the best visual form of quick communication. A good sketcher can get ideas out quickly and effectively. And if it takes somebody three minutes to draw a sketch, that's probably not that good. Imagine being good at sketching. You can knock out a really nice drawing in 30 seconds. That means that you can produce about six times more than someone else. 
get out as many ideas as you can and really filter through them. Thumbtacks may seem like a pretty funny thing to put in this list, but anybody who's been in architecture school knows that you go through thumbtacks pretty quickly. You lend them out to people or you just forget them in the wall or you have a big container and you drop it and you don't feel like picking it up. Whatever happens, they just tend to disappear. I would recommend buying this massive pack because if you lose a couple here and there, you're not gonna to be too worried about it and you're always gonna have some on hand. And I also recommend the clear ones, that way the color of your thumbtacks aren't detracting from your drawings. Angle shears aren't something that's necessarily needed in architecture school, but after a while, I, I realized that they were real game changers for me. You can miter linears really well and then you can trim them up very quickly and it's also easier than using an X-Acto knife every time you want to cut a small linear. I post videos all the time about architecture related content. If you're interested in something like that, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you've enjoyed it so far, or maybe you've learned something. I'm going to release another video that's about very unique items that I use in architecture school that were absolute game changers for me. Trace paper, I think is very important for architecture school for many reasons. It's probably one of the most used materials. For one, if your professor comes by, you probably don't want them drawing all over your stuff, so you can bring out a roll of trace paper for them to do markups on. On top of that, you're gonna have a lot of drawings that are very layered uh, because trace paper is uh, somewhat transparent, so you can see through it. It helps layer on the information, so maybe you can identify things about your drawing that you haven't really seen previously. Trace paper is also a great choice too, because if you're drawing with a medium that tends to bleed through paper, Trace paper is usually pretty resistant to that, so you won't have to worry about it too much. The size of the trace paper that you get is really up to you, but I recommend going with something larger than a foot because you're probably gonna have some drawings that are like 24 by 36, so you wanna be able to cover that as much as possible. In my opinion, grab one that's like 24 inches or at least 18 inches. You can always trim it down to size afterwards if you want. A lot of people are gonna argue and say that this item isn't vital for architecture school, and I'm gonna have to disagree. If, unless you have an outlet right there by your desk. In my grad school, we literally had outlets on our desk. So this didn't really pertain to me in grad school, but in undergrad, there was like one outlet per wall and there's like 50 students on a wall. The item is the extension cord. And you might even wanna pick up one of these surge protectors. That way you can bring the outlet to your desk and have all the hookups that you're gonna need for that semester. Also, the surge protector is great because it offers your laptop protection if there is a storm or something while it's plugged in. The table brush is another item that I probably use too much because I really enjoy cleaning my desk with it. It helps you clean your drawings without smearing them and all those little eraser shavings that are everywhere, you can brush them off very quickly and easily. The time that I use my table brush the most or my dusting brush is after a deadline or after I turn in a project so I can completely clean off my work area. Storage drives. These are extremely important and you wanna probably pick up one that's at least one terabyte. Storage drives are great because you can save all your files onto it and they're not all just living on your computer waiting for an accident to happen. This one that I linked here is one terabyte. You can also get it in other sizes as well but I would recommend one terabyte to start off with. If you realize your projects get way too big, then you can always upgrade and go and purchase one that's like two terabytes or more. It's great because you can back up all your files and after a semester is over, you can save all your files to it and completely wipe your computer so that we start each semester fresh. The cutting mat is essential because you don't wanna damage the furniture that you are actually cutting on. The cutting mat that I would really recommend, it's a clear cutting mat and it's 24 by 36 inches. It's great because it's clear and it doesn't really distract you from whatever drawings you're working on. I think it's also cool because if you put something under it, you can still see what's there. I wouldn't say go out and buy a desk lamp right now, figure out what your setup is at school, and then you might need to go out and purchase one. They're great because if you're working on a drawing, you can adjust your lamp angle so that way you don't cast a shadow and you can see your sketch or your drawing much better. Also, the great thing about having an adjustable lamp is that you can play with lighting on models that you have. You can figure out what lighting angles you like and they also help with taking photographs. Last and definitely not least on the list is drafting dots and or masking tape. Masking tape is great because if you wanna mask off different areas of your drawing for shading or erasing, it can really help with that. I actually had both because I use them for two different purposes, but some people really kind of 
use them interchangeably. And then drafting dots are great because you can hold down paper and create multiple layers on top of each other so that when you're drawing or sketching, your layers don't shift and move. Usually you wanna keep them in place. Also, I wanna throw in one bonus thing here and it is the noise canceling headphones. These are very critical. I know they're usually pretty pricey, but I'm gonna recommend the Sony ones here. I've had these for about five years now and they, there's nothing wrong with them. You can find all the links to everything, including these noise canceling headphones in the description below. If you're an Apple person, of course, I recommend the AirPod Pros. That's what I've been using recently, uh, just because I'm not in like the noisy studio environment anymore. I don't really need anything that's too hardcore. But if you're in school and your studio gets a little rowdy, I'd recommend getting some that are over ear noise canceling headphones. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe down below to see future content just like this. Over there are two videos that I think you'll really like. And if you wanna support a small architecture channel like AltArc, please check out the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. You get a lot of great architecture related benefits, including free downloads. And on top of that, your name gets featured at the end of the videos. Regardless though, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.